Hello bookworms, welcome to the special edition of the Weekend Readers Book Club. Thank you for joining us. Now in 2021, I read a total of 22 books for the Weekend Readers Book Club and 11 of these made it to my bookshelf. The rest have gone into the box to donate and hopefully somebody else will be able to pick them up and give them a go and hopefully enjoy the reads. But today we are discussing the 11 books that made my bookshelf. This is the Weekend Readers Book Club 2021 Bookshelf Collection. So we start this collection off with the first read that we did for the Weekend Readers Book Club. That was Summer Island by Kirsten Hanna. Now this book is a special book for me. It's the book that started it all in relation to this book club. But in addition to that, it was a great read. It was about Nora Bridge, a lady who left her marriage, walked out on her children, and some tabloid stuff happens, and now her daughter has the ability to write an expose about her mum. The only issue is that her two daughters don't actually know her mum, and vice versa, because of the broken down relationship The book takes you on a journey to be able to uh, see what caused the breakdown in the relationship with her leaving and also them trying to mend their relationship overall. It was a great read and this book is very welcome on the bookshelf. And as I said, it was the first book to start this podcast. I did shed a tear in this book and it was a great read. We then followed that book up with... The next book that made our bookshelf, that was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. The book about parallel universes and parallel universes and more parallel universes. In this book, you had the main character, Jason. He got replaced by different Jason from parallel universes. And he's trying to find the correct universe he is supposed to be in. It's a very intricate and fun book to read and even though I don't like parallel universes this book was good I was able to carry on um, and read through it and actually follow along it wasn't too confusing and this was a great way to introduce me to the sci-fi genre per se uh, which was you know a very decent read dark matter and I actually own two copies of this book now (laughs) but one will be gifted so Yeah, it's a very interesting and great read, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. In the third episode of the Weekend Readers Book Club, we read Forrest Gump by Winston Groom. And this book made my bookshelf. It wasn't the best read, as I discussed on the podcast, where I wanted a bit more. But that's solely because the aspects that I enjoyed in the movie, Forrest Gump, were not in the book. But overall, it was a great book, and I put it on the bookshelf to keep it there warm until I had read the sequel, which we'll get to later on. But Forrest Gump by Winston Groom is a great collection uh, to be added to my bookshelf, and I'm actually glad that I really read this stories about Forrest Gump, as you know, and his life, really. It's a very enjoyable book. In episode 4, we went 4 from 4, yes. The fourth book we read in the Weekend Readers Book Club was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And this book, I would have to say, is one of the top three books I had read this year. It was absolutely amazing and thought provocative, um, where you were trying to figure out and understand both sides of the coin in relation to a 15-year-old having an affair with her English professor, and was it love, or was it actually him grooming her? And the main character, Vanessa, looking back on it, where she thinks it's love, but in essence, could be something a little bit different, like he could be grooming her. So this book here, My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, this would be in my, I'd have to say top five, because there's five books in total that 
stand out over and above everything else that I've read this year. It would be in there, and I'll give my top five pick at the very end, but yeah, My Dark Vanessa, Kate Elizabeth Russell, a great, great read. We then skipped a couple of episodes to episode six where we read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Now, I did not like this book by uh, Al Frank Baum. I disliked it with a passion, and if you had listened to the Sex and the City podcast, this is one of those books where I just wish, potentially I would have just given up reading because I didn't enjoy it one little bit. The reason I've kept this, as I said, on the Wizard of Oz podcast was it's an old book, and this this copy that I've got from before 1951, so I thought, you know what, we might as well keep it, and we might as well just chuck it on the bookshelf, and if one of the kids pick it up and want to read it later on, then watch the movie, they're more than welcome to, but yeah, Wizard of Oz, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, sorry, by Al Frank Barnes, just on the uh, bookshelf, for showpiece, really. I read it this year, so I've included it, but it wasn't. A, it's not a book that I would go back to. Oh, Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vanderer. Wow, what a read. This book is absolutely superb. Main character is Joanne. She meets a little girl named Ursula who may have ran away, who may be an alien from outer space. We don't know. And the story takes you on a journey in relation to their relationship, Ursula's backstory, and just her story in relation, Joanne, sorry, her story in relation to meeting new people and accepting love back in her life. It's a very, very great read, and this would also be in my top five as one of the best books that I have read this year. Oh my golly gosh, in episode 11 this year, we read Fatty O'Leary's Dinner Party by Alexander McCall Smith. This book is (laughs) <laughs> it's so much fun to read. It is about Fatty O'Leary, a plump, overweight guy. He doesn't care that he's overweight, but the world seems to just pick on him because he is overweight. And at the end of the day, nothing gets to Fatty. It's a really light-hearted, fun book. And it was great to read this, especially coming off, say, My Dark Vanessa, which was a you know, serious book, Where the Forest Meets the Stars, which was somewhat a serious book as well, and then you get something like Fatty O'Leary's Dinner Party, it's just light-hearted and fun, and it's a great collection to my book club. So yeah, Fatty O'Leary's Dinner Party, Alexander McCall Smith, very good read. Book 13 we read this year was Gump and Co. by Winston Groom. Now this is the sequel to Forrest Gump, And this book nailed home the fact that Forrest Gump and Gump and Co. as a two-book collection are great reads. I found this book more enjoyable than Forrest Gump. It's a continuation of Forrest Gump a few years after the fact. Jenny has died, he's got a kid, and now Forrest carries on his adventures trying to provide for, you know, himself and his new child. It's great in the sense that it allowed continuation from the first book, but it was still separate. As I said, I enjoyed Gump and Co. more than Forrest Gump, but both of them back-to-back would be an enjoyable, fun read. So Winston Groom, Gump and Co., so happy that you and Forrest Gump have made my bookshelf this year. Book 14 that we read this year. <laughs> what can I say? Nano Robot Sex Toys. Yes, Beautiful You by Chuck Palahniuk. That's all you gotta know. Nano robots, sex toys that take over your body when you pleasure yourself. Yes, it is a wacky, wacky story. But the novel itself had me humorously entertained throughout the whole story, where I couldn't put it down because I wanted to know what actually happens and how the book ends. A great story and a great introduction to Chuck Palahniuk. Now, usually people do read Fight Club, supposedly, uh, first, but this is my first Chuck Palahniuk book that I did read, Beautiful You. Um, So I was very, very interested to see what it was like, and I enjoyed him. So, Beautiful You, welcome to my bookshelf. 
book 16 was an interesting one. It was Top Down by Jim Lahir. Now, I enjoyed this book because this book is the retelling of a fiction story based on the JFK assassination where if JFK's vehicle had the top up, would the assassination have happened? And it reviews the guilt and the story of the FBI agent who made the decision to remove the top, hence JFK got assassinated. It was a really enjoyable read. I did enjoy it. And it's a great addition to my book club. Now, at the time, I said, yes, it was a great read. I could potentially see myself reading this book again. After a few months of actually just having it sit there, it's probably one of the least favorite books that I would go back to having read this year, besides The Wizard of Oz. So, I mean, you, you, it did make my bookshelf, and I did enjoy it, and I would recommend it for anybody who, who seems to want to read it to be interested in it. But in all honesty, it, it's on the cusp per se now in recollection, having some time to think about it. But Top Down by Jim LaHare, great book to read. And book 17, and episode 17 of the We Can Readers podcast, we read the final book to make our bookshelf for this year. It was World War Z, The Oral History of a Zombie War by Max Brooks. Now, this book was awesome, and as I said, it did take me some time to get into because it's a tale of the zombie apocalypse, and the war between zombies and humans, but it doesn't read as a novel. It's different interviews throughout the stage in a timeline from the beginning of the zombie war to the end of it, and it's really, really, really interesting. And as I said after the podcast, that I wish they would make World War Z into a TV show and just give it the time that it needed based on the book, because the book is absolutely fabulous compared to the movie, and I'm so glad that I took the time out to read World War Z by Max Brooks. So there you have it, bookworms. They were the books that made my bookshelf in 2021. Yes, we've got Summer Island, Dark Matter, Forrest Gump, My Dark Vanessa, the Wizard of Oz, Where the Forest Meets the Stars, Fatty O'Leary's Dinner Party, Gump and Co, Beautiful You, Top Down, and World War Z. Now, out of those 11 books that I've kept, I've been able to narrow it down to a top five. And I can confirm that my top five for this year were, in no particular order, but these are the top five books that, you know what, if I really had to cull the list down out of the, from the 11, I'll be keeping these five because these five gave me different levels of enjoyment based on reading the books. They would be Kirsten Hanna's Summer Island, Blake Crouch's Dark Matter, Kate Elizabeth Russell's My Dark Vanessa, Glendy Vanderee's Where the Forest Meets the Stars, and Max Brooks' World War Z. So bookworms, thank you for joining me in this special edition of the books that I have read this year for the Weekend Readers Book Club that made the bookshelf in 2021. I will probably be turning this into an annual thing or have a slight recap of the books that make uh, the bookshelf in 2022. Now, the Weekend Readers will be coming back in 2022 with a slightly different format in relation to release dates. As from January 2022 onwards, the podcast will be coming out after every second and fourth weekend in the month. At the beginning of the month, I'll take a picture of what books we are reading in that month, i.e. for January and then in February for February. It just allows people time to go out and source the books if you are following along at home. And then you can tune into the episodes once you have finished the book. But that way, it gives you enough time to get out there to source it and read it as we go along. In addition to that, there is going to be a few special episodes similar to this that are unannounced. So have a look out for those because I want to do something a little different next year and showcase potentially some 
debuting authors that have released novels, that have won awards, they potentially just need some eyes on their product because they may not be as mainstream as they should be. And hopefully, you know, some new eyeballs on their product may assist them in making it big and then making a career out of, you know, writing novels for us. So bookworms, that is our special for today. Feel free to follow us on Instagram, The Weekend Readers Book Club. Follow us on Spotify and also YouTube, The Weekend Readers. You're going to be able to find this episode in all our back catalogue. You can go and listen to all 22 book reviews that we've done this year for 2021 there. So, yeah. Thank you again for taking your time out throughout this whole year to listen to even if it's just one episode of all the episodes. Thank you very much because you've taken your time out of your day and allotted those 6 or 10 minutes, in this case 20 minutes, to listen to the to an episode, listen to me speak about books that I have read, be it good, bad or indifferent. So until next time, bookworms, as always, happy reading.